welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church worship service for today. January 23rd, 2022, we are glad that you decided to join us for our virtual worship service. We're the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church located at 1220 Reverend G.H. Pruitt Place in the beautiful city of St. Louis, Missouri. And our pastor is the Reverend Dr. A.K. Letcher. Thank you for joining us this morning as we get ready for our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad about it. I don't know about you, but every time I turn around, I see another blessing that the Lord has done for me. Yes, I'm Reverend Mary Tillman, and I'm excited about what God has done, what God is doing, and what he's going to do in my life. In spite of all I've been through, church, I still got joy. And so if you will take your Bibles, we will go to our scripture, a very familiar passage, the hymn book of the Bible, the book of Psalm, Psalm 100, and it's talking about rejoicing in God's faithfulness. God is faithful, and he continues to bless us over and over again. And it reads thusly from the King James Version, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you today with adoration, praise, and thanksgiving. For truly, God, when we look back over our lives, it is your grace and your mercy that brought us safe thus far. We ask you to forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, which are many. But we stand today asking for your mercy to continue. We pray for our protection around us, dear God. We're living in perilous times. And dear God, during this pandemic, you brought us this far, and we're counting on you to keep us and protect us. Dear God, we lift up the sick, the shut-in, those that are lonely, those that are homeless, those that are hungry. Father God, those that you have blessed, let us be a blessing to those who stand in the need of a blessing. We know we can't do it all, but God give us what we need to bless somebody. Because if it had not been for you on our side, we don't know where we'd be. But we thank you, God, for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Now, God, as we get ready to go into this service for your preach word, open up our hearts and minds and ears that will not only hear, but be doers of your word. God, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Bless everyone on this call, dear God. Bless everybody that's watching. Let this service be a blessing to each of us. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters in video and virtual land, this is a different situation we're going through, but I've got a preacher for you today that's going to bring the word to hopefully encourage you, inspire you, enlighten you, and give you enough of the word to keep on keeping on. I present to you today an associate minister of the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, none other than Reverend Diana Jackson. She will be bringing our message today. Hear ye what the Lord has to say. Reverend Jackson. Good morning, my church family. God is so good, and he is worthy to be praised. I thank Pastor Letcher for this opportunity, and I thank God again for giving me the opportunity to proclaim his word. Would you bow with me in the word of prayer? Father God, we thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you for waking us up this morning, letting us see a brand new day. Now, Father God, we pray that your word go forward. And Father God, I ask that you sit Diana down 
and you stand, and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer. Yes. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, I'd like to invite you to turn with me to the Gospel of St. Luke. We're going to look at the 10th chapter, and we're going to look at verses 38 through 42. Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 38 through 42. And I will be speaking from the New King James Version. And the word is as follows. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much suffering, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. And so my dear family, from that passage of scripture, I want to speak on the sermon topic, resist the world's distractions. Resist the world's distractions. And my subtopic is choose the good part. Choose the good part. Have you ever found your place or of solitude? Or have you ever found a place of solitude with your mindset that you're going to communicate with God and you notice that your mind started wandering? The phone rings. The dog started barking. You start hearing surrounding sounds around you, music going on in the neighborhood. Or what about this? Have you ever been in the sanctuary with the mind focus set on God's goodness and his mercy? And then you find yourself being distracted, thinking about what you're going to have to do when you get home mm -hmm. or what you're going to have for dinner. Undoubtedly, we all have experienced distraction. No matter where we are, it sometimes seems that when we are concentrating on the Lord, distractions of the world comes about. The problem is that we have become distracted with the things of the world, and many times we are often distracted because we have misplaced priorities. You know, I learned about prioritizing my work many years ago as a secretary for more than 42 years. I still use my prioritizing method, and that is to mark those things which need my immediate attention. I will mark them number one. And secondly, those things that are important but not as urgent, I will mark them as number two. And then those things they need to get done but they're not as urgent as number one and number two, I mark them as number three. And you know, that process works well on my job. But for some reason, after I leave work and I come home, I forget my priority scale and I'm all over the place, going from room to room, upstairs and downstairs. What is it? I need help. I need to regain my focus. But guess what? I received the help I needed.
from this passage of scripture that we just read. I have finally learned to choose the good part. Be at peace, settle down, and rest. Many of us undoubtedly have heard about this family in Bethany who were friends of Jesus. When he visited Jerusalem, rather than spending the night in the city, he went to Bethany and would stay at their home. The scripture states that Martha welcomed him into her home. She was the eldest person in her home. Possibly she was financially stable. We don't know if she was a widow. The Bible does not say. But it tells us that she invites Jesus into her home and he accepts her invitation. Now let me pause here and ask some questions. Is your home, now this is rhetorical, is your home, as it is now, welcomed for Jesus Christ? What would he see? Can he come, and I'm going to say our because that includes me, can he come into our living room? and sit down and feel comfortable? Can he come into our kitchen, open the refrigerator, and everything will be okay? Will we be okay with him looking in our refrigerator? Can he go into our bedroom and feel comfortable? Can we say, Jesus, come on and sit down in the family room, turn the TV on, enjoy yourself, or will we have to say, wait, 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 wait. Let me change the station. Let, wait, wait. Let me go to this DVD. <laughs> have you invited Jesus into your home? Jesus wants to sit in our living room. Yeah. He wants to be at home in our kitchen. He wants to be in our den. He wants to be in our bedrooms. Dear ones, our homes are the first testing ground of our faith. Mm -hmm. If we cannot live our, our faith in our home, then we cannot walk it out elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Before he steps into the door, he already knows what's inside of our homes. How does he know that, Diana? Because he is all-knowing. He sees all things. Let's go deeper. He knows our heart. And he knows what's in our hearts. And what's in our hearts will be made known on the outside. Now getting back to our text. Jesus has entered Martha's house and he sits down. As soon as he does, Martha's younger sister, Mary, comes and she sits at Jesus' feet, which is a posture of a disciple. Now, disciples would show their allegiance to him by arranging themselves at his feet. And the more distant followers would stand a bit away from him. They will watch him from afar. But we see in our text that Mary has taken the position of a disciple. Now, this took courage. You see, she has crossed the line. She has crossed over the barrier for women. She has taken the stance of commitment. She wanted the Lord to pour out wisdom into her spirit. And as the elder, elderless woman in the house, Martha was responsible for feeding the guests. But Mary's role as the youngest was to assist her sister 
So as we look at verse 40, we see that Martha is alone in the kitchen. She's working furiously to put the meal together. No doubt she thought, my sister will be coming in any second now. Seconds pass, no Mary. Well, maybe a few more minutes, Mary will be in. Minutes came around, no Mary. So I can visualize Martha in my mind banging the pots hard so Mary can hear her, clearing her throat loudly, <clears throat> cutting up the vegetables real hard, no doubt like many of us do, and talking under her breath. At first, her talking to herself was probably quiet, but then louder so she could be overheard. Does this sound familiar to any of you? Don't we act like Martha sometimes? Yes, we do. In verse 40, it's clear from her words, Martha's words to Jesus, that Mary is not only getting on her nerves, but Jesus is getting on her nerves also. Look at what she said. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Now, we don't know exactly what thoughts were going through Martha's mind, but we can speculate what she's saying. And I don't believe that Martha was saying this in a calm way to Jesus Christ. She was angry and she had an attitude. We do know that Martha is angry with her sister Mary. To Martha, Mary is out of line. She's not doing her duties. She is crossing the barriers of taking on a disciple's role. She knew her posture at the foot of Jesus was inappropriate. Perhaps Martha thought, if Mary helped me, we could get more done quickly. And we both could listen to Jesus together. But Mary didn't care. Mary's stance was, as I should be, no matter what I'm going to do is listen to Jesus first and everything else have to wait. That's what we have to do. That's what we should do. Our first priority is to go to the Lord and thank him for all that he's done for us. When we get up in the morning, and I'm so guilty of this. For many years, I would get up in the morning and turn the news on. But what I do now, I get up and I thank the Lord for waking me up. I thank him for letting me see another day. I thank him for every heartbeat. Then I sit down, I rest and meditate on his word and listen to what he's saying to me. Then after that, I'll turn the news on. Choosing the good part, church, is what we need to manage. Luke tells us that Martha was distracted by much serving. Now here is the fact. What she was distracted from was Jesus himself. What she was distracted by was service. Let me repeat that. What she was distracted from was Jesus himself. What she was distracted by was service. But she was making Jesus a meal. How could that be a, a distraction, Diana? How could do something for the Lord be wrong? Very simple. When service for the Lord distracts us from the person of the Lord, 
it is wrong, we end up becoming like Martha, embittered and resentful of others who seem to be doing less than we are, but it seems like they're enjoying joy and the blessings and the peace of God, and we're not. We're miserable. This is a tendency that is especially dangerous for people in ministry. Ministry becomes an idol. We worship the ministry rather than worshiping God. People get so caught up in the details of serving the Lord, they have no time left for Him. And they look around and they see others who seem to be doing little and they become like Martha, resentful, crying out, Lord, make them do something. This passage shows us that people have different temperaments and different personalities. Whenever we see Martha in the Bible, she's busy and she's active. Remember in John chapter 11, when Lazarus, her brother, died? and Jesus came to Bethany, she was the first one to go out and meet him. When we look at John in the 12th chapter, she again, we see her making Jesus and the disciples a meal. But when we look at the Bible and we see Mary, Mary is much different. Every time we read about Mary, she has quietly placed herself at Jesus' feet. She's humble, just like she is in this passage. In John 11, she throws herself, Mary, at Jesus' feet, and she pleads for her dead brother. Notice her posture. She's at Jesus' feet. In John 12, while Jesus is eating the meal that Martha has cooked, Mary is anointing Jesus' feet with perfume. While Martha was all over the place, moving here and there, Mary was quiet and ministering to the Lord. These kind of people tend to get on each other's nerves. The one who is geared up towards action looks at the one who's more settled and content, and that person is frustrated. For the contented person, looking at the busy person that's moving, 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 that person looks at the busy person and says, what is wrong with you? Why don't you sit down somewhere and listen to the Lord? What's happening here? While both kinds of persons have their strength, both of them have their weaknesses. And this passage calls us into fellowship with one another. It calls us to fellowship together just as Martha and Mary, who were sisters, they shared the same house. Church, the main reason is because God wants us to complement working together and learn to bring each other into balance. That's what we're to do. Verse 41 and 42 tells us again, and Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, which would not be taken away from her. Listen, Jesus did not rebuke Martha. He spoke tender to her. We see that in the way he calls her, Martha, Martha. And we see that in the Bible when God is calling people. He's not calling them in anger. Remember when he called Saul? He said, Saul, Saul. Remember when he called Simon? He said, Simon, Simon. You see, Jesus knew both Martha and Mary's heart. Yes, on the surface, 
it really was appropriate for Mary to help her sister. But Jesus knew that Mary was not being defiant and lazy. Mary gave priority to the supremacy of Christ and knew life itself was comprised of hanging on every word from Jesus Christ. While Martha was making a loaf of bread, Mary was in the room with Jesus eating the bread of life. But he knew Martha's heart was on serving him. That's why he gently corrected her by letting her know that she is distracted and that her priorities were out of order. Martha has her bucket list. Her bucket list is hospitality for Jesus and his followers. I got to do that. A big meal has to be prepared. The table has to be prepared and then we got to clean up. She was worried and troubled about it all. Rather than Resting in the Lord, which she served, she trusted in herself to get it all done. And that's what drains us, church. That's what irritates us. What causes us to explode in outbursts. We're trusting in ourselves to pull it all together. And this behavior caused anxiety and distress. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen it. Mary chose the one thing, and that is to put Jesus first. Notice something, too, in the text. Martha called Jesus Lord, but she was irritated with him and Mary. Now, Martha, if he's really Lord... She should have waited on him and he would have told her to start cooking and she could have just sat with Mary listening to them talk. Mary knew that service to the Lord must always be directed by the Lord himself. We must hear from him and be patiently sitting at his feet and listening to his word. Many of us are trying desperately to live for the Lord at home, at work, in our neighborhoods, but we lack power. We don't have the anointing. Why? Because we're not spending time at Jesus' feet. We're not hearing him. We're not reading his word. We're not fasting. We're not praying. We're trying to make bread before we partake of the bread of life. We're trying to give others a drink before we drink from the fountain of the living water. We're trying to shine as light, but we don't have the reflection of Jesus Christ. Church, before we go out, we must come in. Before we rise up, we must first sit down. Service is important because we're called to serve, but service must flow from the heart. It must flow from time spent in the Lord's presence which must be our first priority. Or if not, it'll just be a work of the flesh. The Bible does not tell us what the conversation was that Jesus had with Mary. But whatever he said to her, it had her full attention. Listen, we all have been a Martha. And let me share this with you. We can learn a lesson from both of these ladies. You see, both of them are needed. We need some Marthas. Let me explain. We need some Marthas, people who are willing to serve for the Lord. Some people don't want to do anything. 
They're lazy, but not the Marthas. The Marthas want to serve, and when they serve, they serve well. But most importantly, we need some Marys. In fact, all of us, and I'm talking about male and female, all of us need to be a Mary. Sitting at the Lord's feet, spending time with him, getting instructions first, and then go out and serve. The good part for us is to digest the gospel of Jesus, accept the salvation principle in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Let us, my church family and friends, let us resist distractions and walk out the road of a born again believer. When we have done that, our priority is in order and we have chosen the good part. And let the people of God say amen, amen. The doors of the church of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church the doors are now open. We offer Christ to you today. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you'd like to give, and we sincerely hope you do, if you'd like to give your life to Christ and unite with Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, you can come as a candidate for baptism or Christian experience. You may do so either by reaching out to one of our pleasant parishioners, calling our church office at 314-535-7548 and leave a message. Or you can email us at ghpruitt, that's P-R-U-I-T-T -T at gmail.com. Leave your contact information and someone will respond as soon as possible. And we want to thank those who are very diligent and the generosity that's shown in your stewardship and giving. Thank you for your continued generosity. We are taught to give and when you give, it shall be given to us. Press down, shaken together, running over. We can't be God's giving, friends. We can't be God's giving, no matter how hard we try. Two ways that you can give. You can give electronically. Visit our website. That's pgmbcstl.org and click on the giving tab. Or you can email your contributions, I'm sorry, or you can mail your contribution in a check or money order and send it to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, 1220 Reverend G.H. Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Church family and friends, I sincerely hope that you were able to get something from this word. I pray that God has touched your heart and that you have a takeaway from listening about the story of Martha and Mary. And I want to close out with a prayer that Moses told his brother. Aaron, who was the high priest. I want to close out with a prayer and then I will give the benediction. Father God, we pray that this word has gone forth, Lord, and that it has fallen, Lord, on ground, Lord, on good ground. Lord, that someone will look at themselves and say, Lord, I want to be saved. Someone will look at themselves and say, 
I need to get my priorities in order. And Lord, as you told Aaron, this is what I speak over your people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Pleasant green, visitors, friends, may you have a peaceful day. May God bless you. And I wish you the best. Continue lifting up our pastor in prayer. Thank you. God bless.